Welcome to today's video. I am Dr. Samuel, your guide to mastering advanced techniques in Excel for financial modeling. It's a pleasure to have you all here, and I am thrilled to share my knowledge on this riveting subject. So let's start at the beginning. What is financial modeling, you may ask? Well, in the most basic terms, financial modeling is a tool that's used to predict a business or asset's performance. It's a way of painting a picture of various scenarios that could happen in the future based on certain variables. And why is it important? Simply put, financial modeling helps businesses make informed strategic decisions. It's a way to forecast potential outcomes and plan accordingly. Now you might be thinking, Dr. Samuel, I understand the concept, but how does Excel fit into all of this? Good question. Excel is a powerful tool that can be used to build these financial models. It's flexible, it's widely used, and it allows for complex calculations and data analysis. Throughout this video, we'll be diving into some of the advanced techniques you can use in Excel to build robust and comprehensive financial models. We'll start by understanding the basics of Excel, then we'll move on to creating our first financial model step by step. We'll also explore some of the advanced Excel functions that are particularly useful for financial modeling. And finally, we'll review and test our financial model to make sure it's accurate and reliable. Whether you're a seasoned financial analyst or a business owner wanting to get a better handle on your finances, these techniques will provide you with the skills you need to create effective financial models in Excel. So if you're ready to take your Excel skills to the next level and make more informed financial decisions, then you're in the right place. Stay tuned as we dive into the first technique. Before we delve into the advanced techniques, a quick refresher on some Excel basics. Excel, as you might know, is a powerful spreadsheet program that allows us to crunch numbers, analyze data, and visualize results. But to fully harness its power, we need to understand some essential functionalities. First and foremost, formulas. They're the backbone of Excel's computational prowess. A formula, quite simply, is an expression that performs calculations on the data in your cells. For example, if you want to add two numbers in cells A1 and B1, you'd write equal sign A1 plus B1. Excel would then do the math for you. Next up, functions. Functions are predefined formulas that perform specific calculations. They range from simple ones like sum and average to complex ones like VLOOKUP and index match. For instance, if you have a column of numbers and you want to find their sum, you'd use the sum function, like so, equal sign sum, a 1, a 10. Now let's talk about data formatting. Excel offers a variety of formats to help you display your data more clearly. You can format your cells as numbers, text, dates, percentages, and more. For instance, if you're dealing with financial data, you might want to format your numbers as currency. Conditional formatting is another powerful tool. It allows you to automatically apply formatting, like colors, icons, and data bars, to cells that meet certain conditions. It's a great way to highlight important data points or detect patterns. Lastly, cell referencing. There are two types, relative and absolute. In relative referencing, cell references adjust automatically when you copy formulas from one cell to another. But in absolute referencing, they remain constant, Remember, these basics are the building blocks of all Excel operations. They're essential for creating complex financial models, analyzing vast amounts of data, and making informed business decisions. With these basics in place, we are ready to venture into the advanced realm of Excel financial modeling. Let's take this journey together with Dr. Samuel, who will guide us every step of the way. Dr. Samuel here, ready to guide you through the first step of building a financial model in Excel. Financial modeling is a crucial skill in today's data-driven world, and Excel is the tool of choice for many professionals. So, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is set up our Excel environment. Start by opening a new workbook. This will be our blank canvas. Let's give it a name that's relevant to our project. Remember, organization is key when it comes to financial modeling. Next, we'll create our worksheets. Think of them as individual chapters of our model. Each worksheet will focus on a specific aspect of our financial model, such as revenue, expenses, or cash flow. We'll name them accordingly, keeping our model organized and easy to navigate. Now let's start populating our worksheets with initial data. This is where we input our assumptions, historical data, and any other relevant information. Remember, the quality of our model heavily depends on the accuracy of this data, so be meticulous with your inputs. Once we've got our data in place, we'll start building our layout. 
This involves setting up rows and columns to structure our data effectively. It's a good practice to separate inputs, calculations, and outputs. Keep the layout clean and logical. Use Excel's formatting tools to distinguish between different types of data. Finally, let's talk about cell referencing. This is a fundamental concept in Excel. It enables us to create dynamic models that automatically update when input data changes. Always use cell references instead of hard-coded numbers. This will make your model more flexible and less prone to errors. Building a financial model in Excel may seem daunting at first, but with practice, it becomes second nature. Remember, the key is to be organized and thorough. Keep your model clean, logical, and easy to follow. And most importantly, always double check your data and calculations. That's the first step down. Let's proceed to the next. Moving on to the second step in our financial modeling journey. This stage is where we dive a little deeper and start to calculate some basic financial metrics. First, we'll tackle the profit margin. This is a measure of profitability and is calculated as net income divided by total revenue. It gives us a percentage that represents the proportion of revenue left after all expenses have been deducted. A high profit margin indicates a more profitable company that has better control over its costs compared to its competitors. Next, let's discuss the return on assets, or ROA. This is a measure of how efficiently a company is using its assets to generate earnings. It's calculated as net income divided by total assets. The higher the ROA, the better, as it indicates that the company is earning more money on less investment. Another important financial metric is the current ratio, which measures a company's ability to pay short-term and long-term obligations. To calculate the current ratio, you divide current assets by current liabilities. A current ratio greater than one indicates that the company will be able to pay off its obligations. If it is less than one, it means the company may run into trouble meeting its short-term obligations. Lastly, let's focus on the debt-to-equity ratio. This metric provides an understanding of a company's financial leverage. It's calculated by dividing total liabilities by shareholders' equity. A high debt-to-equity ratio often means that a company has been aggressive in financing its growth with debt, which can result in volatile earnings. Remember, these financial metrics are a good starting point, but they don't provide the full picture. It's always important to look at them in the context of the company's industry, its competitors, and its historical performance. Well done on completing step two. Let's forge ahead. Uh, Dr. Samuel here, ready to introduce some advanced Excel functions that are crucial for financial modeling. To create comprehensive and accurate financial models, we need to harness the power of some of Excel's most potent tools. Let's dive in. First up, we have VLOOKUP. It stands for Vertical Lookup. This function helps to find specific information in your spreadsheet. Think of it as your personal data detective, sifting through rows of data to find the exact piece of information you need. Next, we have eight lookup, which is similar to VLOOKUP, but it scans horizontally. It's like having a hawk's eye view of your data, allowing you to spot the information you're looking for across the horizon of your spreadsheet. Now, let's move on to pivot tables. These are Excel's way of summarizing and analyzing large data sets. With pivot tables, you can manipulate and explore your data in ways that would be time-consuming and complicated with standard functions. It's like having a magnifying glass that can also rearrange the items you're examining. Finally, we have macros. These are sequences of commands that automate tasks. You can think of macros as your personal assistant, taking care of mundane tasks so you can focus on the bigger picture. Macros can automate repetitive tasks, saving you time and reducing the risk of errors. Each of these advanced functions serves a unique purpose in financial modeling. The lookup and HLOOKUP help you to find and align data. Pivot tables allow you to analyze and summarize data, and macros automate repetitive tasks. Together, they form a powerful quad that can significantly enhance your ability to create robust and accurate financial models. These advanced functions are powerful tools for your financial modeling toolkit. Let's see them in action. Now that we have built our model, it's time to review and test it. This is Dr. Samuel, and I will show you how. In the world of financial modeling, creating your model is only half the battle. The other half, that's ensuring its accuracy and reliability. These two qualities are the cornerstones of any good financial model. So, how do we go about ensuring them? First, let's talk about reviewing your model. 
This is where you'll need to take a fine tooth comb to every formula, every cell, and every row. You're looking for any inconsistencies, any errors that might have slipped through the cracks. This is a meticulous process, but it's one that pays dividends, because an error in your model could mean a significant discrepancy in your final results. Next, we move on to testing your model. This is where you'll put your model through its paces. You'll run different scenarios, adjust different variables, and see how your model responds. This is a crucial step in understanding how your model behaves under different conditions. It's a stress test of sorts, and it's designed to reveal any potential weaknesses or vulnerabilities. Now you might be wondering, Dr. Samuel, what happens if I find an error in my model? Well, that's a great question. If you find an error, you'll need to go back and correct it. This might mean adjusting a formula, changing a variable, or even rethinking a key assumption. The goal here is not to eliminate errors. Because, let's be real, errors are a part of life, but to minimize their impact. So remember, reviewing and testing your model are not optional steps. They're integral parts of the financial modeling process. They're your safety nets, your quality checks. They're what ensure your model is not just good, but great. Review and testing are crucial steps in ensuring your model's accuracy and reliability. Well done. Well, we have come a long way in our journey of mastering advanced Excel techniques for financial modeling. This is Dr. Samuel, and I am proud of your progress. We started off by introducing the concept of financial modeling in Excel, a powerful tool that's right at your fingertips. We then took a deep dive into the basics of Excel, reminding ourselves that a strong foundation is crucial for building complex financial models. Then, we took our first steps into the arena of financial modeling, exploring the initial stages of creating a model. We dove into the details of data collection and organization, ensuring we have a clear and comprehensive understanding of the information we're working with. Next, we ventured into the second phase of our journey, where we brought our data to life through the use of formulas and functions. We saw how Excel's built-in features can do the heavy lifting for us, transforming raw data into valuable insights. Then we elevated our Excel skills to new heights with advanced functions, specifically designed for financial modeling. We discovered the power of Excel's data analysis toolkit and how we can leverage this to drive our financial models. In our penultimate step, we reviewed and tested our model, ensuring its accuracy and reliability. We learned the importance of regular checks and adjustments to keep our model relevant and accurate. Now as we wrap up, remember that mastering Excel for financial modeling is a journey. It's not about reaching a destination, but about continuous learning and practice. Each model you build will come with its own set of challenges and learning opportunities, and each one will make you a better financial analyst. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Samuel, in this journey. Remember to subscribe, like, and share for more content like this. Keep practicing and happy modeling.